Good morning, and welcome to your Daily Dose, international yachting, sailing, and boating news for Monday, June 27th. If you like what you see or hear, please do subscribe. If you have a story or a suggestion, you can reach out to us at info at yachtinginternationalradio.com. I am Ria Rao, and this is your Daily Dose. Russian oligarchs have parked their assets in the UAE, even as Western governments increasingly enforce sanctions and American pressure mounts on its Gulf Arab ally to follow suit. The UAE, home to glitzy Dubai and oil-rich Abu Dhabi, has declined to take sides in Moscow's war and welcomed the influx of Russian money to its beachfront villas and luxury hotels. The UAE has declined to take sides in Moscow's war and welcomed the influx of Russian money. Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adeyemo, one of the main U.S. coordinators on the Russian sanctions strategy, visited Dubai and Abu Dhabi to meet with Emirati financial officials this week. During a banking roundtable, he pleaded for increased vigilance. Despite this commitment to prevent money laundering, the UAE and other global financial hubs continue to face the threat of illicit financial flows, he has stated. Sure, Washington will be keeping a close eye on the UAE as the Russian-Ukraine war continues and sanctions become increasingly stronger. The USS Samuel B. Roberts was found broken into two pieces on a slope at a depth of 6,985 meters off the Philippine island of Samar. The battleship, popularly known as the Sammy B, sunk during the final phase of the Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944, in which the Imperial Japanese Navy suffered its biggest loss of ships. The depth it was found at was 1,400 feet deeper than the USS Johnson, the previous deepest wreck discovered last year. Both were discovered by U.S. explorer Victor Vescovo, founder of Dallas-based Caladan Oceanic Expeditions. He announced the latest find alongside U.K.-based marine travel specialist EOS Expeditions. The Sami B was critically hit by the Yamato and sank. Of its 224-man crew, 89 died and 120 were saved, including the captain, Lieutenant Commander Robert W. Copeland. Kaliden and Eo said that up until the discovery, historical records of the exact wreck site were not very accurate. Searching for it involved using the deepest side scan sonar ever installed and operated on a submersible, well beyond the limitations of 6,000 meters for which it is commercially recommended. The captain of a luxury yacht was fined $8,000 in magistrate's court after he admitted that his vessel released sewage into St. George's Harbor over the Bermuda Heroes weekend. Captain Mark Pearson, 38, pleaded guilty to both discharging sewage in a no-discharge zone and leaving a seacock valve intended to control the release of sewage open in an incident on Monday. Pearson apologized for the incident and said he had taken steps to ensure that it would not happen again. He stated that he hoped that some of the money goes to proper signage and education for people coming into the waters, as there is nothing at the port or on the websites. And he hoped it's used in the proper way because it's quite inadequate what they have down there. The court heard yesterday that a government environmental engineer received a video which appeared to show the 80-foot Zanab releasing sewage near Ordnance Island. On a side note, and a personal opinion, no yacht should be releasing sewage in any harbor, period. Signage or no signage. A Preston woman who was sailing her yacht alone at night in the Irish Sea nearly died after she fell overboard and was left watching her boat speed away on autopilot. The incident happened at around 2.30 a.m. on Friday, June 17th. She was returning to her mooring at Preston Marina after sailing to the Isle of Man and was about 12 nautical miles northwest of Blackpool when she fell overboard. Stranded alone in the freezing waters, she watched in horror as her yacht sailed away on autopilot. Luckily, she was equipped with a life jacket and a personal locator beacon, which she was able to activate to alert rescue teams to her location. HM Coast Guard immediately put out a May Day broadcast to all vessels in the area, and a rigged supply ship made its way to where she was found floating alone in the darkness. 
The crew spotted her flashing a distress light from two nautical miles away and were able to rescue her within an hour of her going overboard. She was then passed into the care of Fleetwood's RNLI team and was taken ashore by lifeboat to be checked over by Northwest Ambulance Service. A search and rescue helicopter was also sent to help with the search and managed to locate her yacht as it continued to sail towards the Lancashire coast. It was intercepted by the other local vessels and towed back to shore by Litham lifeboat crew. The woman was very shaken, a bit confused, but otherwise in good health. A Myrtle Beach Yacht Club community member is dead after a vicious attack by an 11-foot alligator. Horry County Fire Rescue Units determined the alligator took hold of the person and pulled the victim into a retention pond. The victim's body was later recovered from the pond, and South Carolina Department of Natural Resources officials concluded the alligator should be euthanized on site. The recent rise in alligator attacks is due to the population increase of alligators and humans. Don't forget to tune in this evening at 1900 CET for crew travel with Lee Harris and Blue Marine Travel. If it is canceled flights, possible strikes, or visa requirements, Lee has your answer when you are heading to your next crew job. This has been your daily dose of yachting, sailing, and boating news for Monday, June 27th. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any suggestions, questions, or news that you would like to share, send us an email at info at yachtinginternationalradio.com. Don't forget to hit subscribe to be kept up to date on all the marine industry headlines happening around the world. Please join us here tomorrow morning at 0600 CET Midnight EST for your daily dose of yachting, sailing, and boating news. I am Ria Rao, and this has been your Daily Dose.